Okay, so I'm here today to tell you a story from my life that really changed the way I think about things. And at the risk of sounding totally cheesy, I, my hope is that hearing my story will inspire you to pursue your dreams too. Okay, let's rewind several years to when I was freshly graduated from college and I had my first really legitimate summer internship. I was hired to be a software engineer at a hip new startup in San Francisco. And before this, I was really heads down doing research, thinking I would go into academia one day. But the point is, this was completely new, uncharted territory for me, so it was kind of a big deal. Um, on the first day of my internship, I woke up really early and had this professional but stylish outfit picked out, and I arrived at the office all bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and really eager to get going. And the first thing that happened was they plopped me down into this engineering all-hands meeting. And at this point, I'm thinking to myself, whoa, okay, an all-hands, a meeting, this is, I, I am one of the all-hands on deck in this business, and I am needed for a meeting. <laughs> Needless to say, I was pretty excited about it. Um, and that meeting was great. You know, the engineers I met were really nice, and the topics we talked about were interesting and important and all of that. But there was one thing that really stuck out to me in that meeting, and I noticed it immediately when I sat down. I was the only woman in that room. And that thought lingered with me for the rest of the day. You know, in this 50-person startup, I was the one and only technical female. Now, I should mention that I had just graduated from Wellesley, which is an all-women's college, so my awareness of this was probably a little bit heightened. Um, I mean, think about that contrast, right? I went from this classroom full of women who are studying computer science and doing hackathons together to suddenly a room full of men, and I am the only woman engineer. That summer, I learned a lot from the boys that I worked with but I never found someone that I could really relate to, you know, someone that I could look up to. And to be completely honest with you, that kind of bummed me out. In the fall, that, in the fall I started my master's program studying computer science at Stanford. And that little nagging feeling that started in me over the summer just grew stronger and stronger. I mean, the girls that I met in my classes were all really amazing people. Like, they were smart and cool and inspiring. And both studying at Wellesley and studying at Stanford, all the girls that I met just completely shattered the stereotypes that I had in my head when I was in high school. And so I kept wondering to myself, like, why aren't there more of us? I wish that when I was in high school, I had met people like them to mentor me. Um, and so a couple months into the school year, I was having coffee with an old friend of mine at Phil's, and we were just chatting about this, and she was really encouraging to me. And at that point, I thought to myself, like, yeah, why, she's totally right. Like, why am I just sitting here talking about it and letting it bother me, and why am I not actually doing something about this? So later that week, with the help of this friend, um, we went back to my dorm room and we took my iPhone and propped it up on a couple of textbooks and pulled out some paper and some Sharpies. And we just drafted up a proposal, which I want to share with you today. Hey, let's talk about something for a minute. So in the current job market, there's this huge demand for people who have technical skills. There are all these CS and engineering jobs over here, and just not enough graduates over here who can fill them. This is especially true where I live in the Silicon Valley. There's tons of tech jobs in this area. Okay, that all sounds great, so what's the problem? Well, here are 10 engineers. Here's me, and here's, wait, what? Yeah, out of all engineers in the job force today, only 14.5% of them are women. Hmm, so why aren't there more women interested in studying computer science? First of all, they don't think that they'll be good at it. Second, they don't think computer science is interesting. And third, they have this image of engineers that they don't think is very attractive. Girls Teaching Girls to Code is a program to inspire more girls to pursue opportunities in computer science and in engineering. 
Over one weekend, 30 Stanford and UC Berkeley women will teach 100 Bay Area high school girls to code. The goal of the program is to empower girls by showing them that, one, they can code, two, that coding is useful and fun, and three, that there are awesome women in this field who can mentor them for a career in computer science. Thanks for listening. Okay, so on a win, we submitted that, that video that you just watched to a contest online, and much to my surprise, it actually started getting some traction and people started voting for the idea, and we actually won. Um, and this was a big turning point for me because it was kind of like just the cake in the butt that I needed. Um, for the first time now, I had, well, one, a validation that other people in this world care about this too. And two, I had a little bit of seed money to get me started. So that's the story of how Girls Teaching Girls to Code was born. But I think the part, that, the part of the story that's truly difficult and interesting is the part that follows after that. You see, at this point in time, all I had was an idea, myself, and a small check. And to most people, that might not seem like a lot to work with. But now, when I reflect back on that journey of turning nothing into something, I think there are like three key takeaways that I want to pass on to you today. And don't worry, they're really quite simple and maybe even obvious. So lesson number one. Uh, in order to get any idea off the ground, you cannot do it alone. I knew from the get-go that I needed to assemble an all-star team. Um, so I started going around trying to find other people who were just as passionate about bringing girls into computer science as I was. And it was actually really easy because when someone is really passionate about something, it emanates from them and they seek out opportunities and they're not afraid to jump into something crazy. And so it didn't take me very long to find Caroline, Jesse, and Fonny. And the four of us together, we had no idea what we were getting ourselves into. We didn't know what we wanted to do or how we were gonna do it, but we knew that we were all really excited about it and that's honestly all we needed to get started. Lesson number two, dream up an overly ambitious plan. When we started, we had tons of big ideas. We said, okay, we want this thing to be coordinated across multiple universities. We wanna reach hundreds of girls across the country. We wanna provide dozens of classes that, so that each girl can tailor their, their experience to their own interests. We want to provide computers for everyone so that underprivileged students can participate too. And that list goes on and on and on. We had all these big ideas, and while most people would have said, okay, straight up, that's impossible. We looked at each other and we said, okay, let's try, like, why not? And I think when you're overly ambitious, sometimes people will think you're naive, but for us, being overly ambitious really pushed us to reach for the stars, and oftentimes along the way, we were surprised by what we could actually accomplish and pull together. So that leads me to my third and final point. Uh, if you're being overly ambitious, you need to always keep in mind that things just don't go according to plan. And so you need to be adaptable, you know, roll with the punches, don't take yourself too seriously, and always maintain perspective of why you're doing what you're doing. It was only a few weeks into this thing that we realized that seed money we had was just not gonna cut it. It was not gonna be anywhere near enough. And at that point, it would have been really easy for us to just dust off our hands and say, okay, forget it, we don't have enough money, let's just go grab lunch, call it a day. But instead, what we did was we put our heads together and we got creative. We said, okay, hmm. So Google over there down the street, they seem to have a lot of money, and I think they're interested in bringing more females into the engineering world. So maybe they'll be wanting to get involved in this thing we're doing, so why don't we shoot them an email and see how that goes? And we did that with a bunch of companies across the Bay Area. And I'm not gonna lie to you, we got ignored a lot. And we got rejected a lot. And at each of those points, it would have been so easy for us to just give up. But instead, at each of those points, what we chose to do was just approach the problem from a different angle. Think of it, think of a different solution. And I mean, that's what engineering is all about anyway, right? 
And I remember there was this moment where the four of us, we had just gotten that Google sponsorship, and we looked at each other kind of incredulous, incredulously, like, wow, okay, so this, this is really happening, I guess. Like, this is a legitimate thing now, all of a sudden. And that was just an awesome moment that I'll never forget. But don't get me wrong, there were a lot of big, big ideas we had, and we pursued them, and we pursued them hard, and it did not work out the way we wanted it to, and it didn't, it didn't work out the way we, we had hoped. But the point here is that at the end of the day, we were still doing something that we believed in, and we were working with people that we really liked working with, and ultimately, that is what made it so gratifying and so fun. So that's the story of Girls Teaching Girls to Code. Um, before I go, I want to leave you with this. I want each and every one of you in this room to think about something that doesn't quite sit right with you about this world. And you know, be observant. Find something that you're passionate about. And then after that, go and find, surround yourself with the right people, you know, people who care about this thing too. It bothers them too. And then together, dream something huge, and I mean like massive, and then just do something about it. Because why not? Thank you for having me. <laughs>